And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Level 7 has a very scary looking box. I mean, really. You look at this guy coming through the door, and I'm scared already. I mean, I really am. This is, uh, uh, and when you read the first thing, you wake up in the darkness, and you're basically inside a test tube, and you've, 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 you've broken out of it somehow, and you're like sitting there, uh, and you look around, and there's a few other people doing the same thing. Oh, they just broke out of test tubes. And then you look, and there's some weird looking alien thing coming towards you. What do you do? Sounds like a choose-your-own-adventure book. And uh, essentially, this is a cooperative game in which players are trying to get out of level 7 alive. Let me show you. I'm not going to go over every rule of the game, just go over some of the highlights of how the game works. You have a, a character. Each person is a character. They don't really have a name. They're just subject uh, 13JLM1110. Okay? Uh, each character is going to start with two skill cards. So, for example, this character is a survivalist and they're also Zen. Uh, which give you special abilities. It's possible that they were a bookworm and they're sneaky or perhaps they're paranoid and uh, a linebacker, okay? Whatever those are, and those will give you special abilities. Over here you have a fear track, which you will keep track of your fear. And as your fear goes up and down, it will increase your stats somewhat. You can see here that when your fear goes up to the top, that you get stronger and faster. Okay, but aliens also are attracted to you because aliens like to come after people who are afraid. And so you have these stats, and what you'll be doing is you're, bringing, you're going to be going through a scenario. Now, I'm going to make up a fake scenario here because I don't want to spoil the game for people. But what you're going to be doing is you'll be starting maybe on this tile or on different tiles in the game. The, there might be a setup of tiles. And then your character, uh, who is on a stand, all the ca characters are on plastic stands. So, for example, here's a character, and you might start there. And as the game progresses, you're going to come up against both guards and aliens. Now, the, the guards will show up, and guards will be moving around doing whatever they're supposed to do according to the scenario. And then there's aliens. Look at the creepy aliens. Ooh. And you can see their stats down here, uh, how many dice they roll, what their health or defense is. In fact, those aren't the only aliens. There's even bigger aliens as the game progresses. And those aliens actually are on bigger stands so that they tower above you. <laughs> that guy is really kind of freaky looking. And so as the scenario progresses, what you'll be doing on your turn is you will be moving around on the board uh, according to your movement value, and you'll often be discovering new tiles, and they'll come from different stacks. Maybe the stacks are preset. And as you turn over a tile, sometimes an event will trigger. Sometimes you'll find an item. It all depends what happens in that room. Sometimes a room will have a very specific function, but you're basically just turning these over, and you attach these tiles. Now, tiles have to be attached so that doors connect with doors. But also, a lot of the tiles, it's hard to see here in this video, but you'll notice there's a thin line here on the side. That's the ducts. And so sometimes there's uh, different tiles that have a, a duct system on them. Uh, like, for example, here, you can see that you can crawl into the ducts here and you can crawl through ducts. Now, unfortunately, so can the aliens, all right? Now, guards aren't going to be doing that. There's actually a certain amount of threat and lockdown. Lockdown is kind of a timer for the mission, and that will start when all the threat is gone. Threat is put on you through various th functions of the game, and the guards always run after the person who's the most threat. So guards might be fighting aliens. It will happen. The guards are chasing down the aliens, too, but they will come after you if they think you are a big enough threat. So that's part of the game. And so there's lots and lots of different tiles and lots of different scenarios that can be set up.
Now you'll be using cards to help fight these. Each of these cards uh, will have you lose fear or gain fear, and if you cannot lose or gain the fear, then you can't play the card. Uh, and there's two different things. You can do the top part or you can do the bottom part. And any card can be discarded anytime to raise or lower your fear by one. And you often want to have your fear go down because uh, the aliens tend to go for the people with the highest fear. But you can see here, you lose two fear and it helps increase your intelligence. You lose one fear to increase your... You gain a fear, but you can move faster. You gain a fear and you can, you can fight more. Now, during the game, you'll be making different checks. Maybe it's in combat against somebody, although your combat here mostly is to knock them down. And then after they've been knocked down, I mean, you can finish them off maybe in another combat, but usually you're better off running away. You're usually just, you're running, running, running in this game. But you're gonna use these dice to make combat checks. Now, on three of the sides of these dice, there's one of each symbol here, movement, um, the brains and the brawn, and then the other three sides have double of, of each thing. So there's a double brawn, double brains, double feet. And so you have to make checks, so maybe a check will be how many uh, fists can you roll. And so I roll, and wow, had I been rolling for, for brains, this would have been a great roll. Look at all those brains I rolled, but unfortunately I only got two fists. So you have a certain amount of dice that you will roll. Back to your character sheet over here, you have another character of vitality here, and this will move up and down. It shows how many cards you can have in your hand. If you run out of cards at any point in time and you take more hits, then you can be eliminated, or depending on the scenario, or sent to the sick bay. Now, all is not lost. Different uh, scenarios will have you where you can find different items, like maybe a scalpel, or a stun stick, or a map fragment or a flashlight, or oh, a gun. Okay, so there's different items that you can get. Now again, I've just very generalized how the game works, okay? Because I don't want this review to take forever, but I want to point out that the game has a lot of components, but essentially, on your turn, you're going to take some movement, you're going to go into a new area, and you're going to see what happens in that area. Uh, like I said, there's events. The events often have where you turn them over, and an event depending on what symbol is in your room, that's what kind of event happens. And then, depending on how many players are in the game, it will tell you which aliens or guards are activated on the board, and then they will move and act very specifically according to the scenario. Uh, you're trying to accomplish something, usually getting to the elevator or getting to another spot before the aliens and guards get you. Component-wise, the game is fine. I like the artwork on the aliens. I like how the big, there's big aliens, and they're big. You know, when they're coming out, everyone's screaming and yelling and uh, the fear is an interesting asset to the game although managing your fear is not that difficult you can try to keep your fear down the problem with level 7 is not the story because the story is interesting and I do like how one uh, thing goes into the next, and the as the story progresses, uh, you feel yourself, the first one you're running for an elevator, the second one the elevator breaks down, and now you gotta get out and get the elevator fixed and get it working again, and you go on and so forth till you, you meet the big bad guy of, of this thing. And I don't wanna spoil too much of it if you're trying to get into it for the story. But the problem with it isn't the theme, the problem with it isn't the components, or even necessarily the mechanics of the game, but when it all comes down to it, this falls into a genre of what I call flip a tile and see what happens. This is a genre that has been around and is in many games. I mean, it's in Betrayal and House on the Hill, it's in Dungeon Run, it's in even Mansions of Madness has it to some degree, where you basically say, I'm going in the next room, what happens? You turn over a tile, it's like, aha, trap, this, that, bad guy, then, then you roll dice and see what happens. So, it's, that's okay, but it really doesn't offer anything interesting or unique about, to the game. But... Another thing is, while the theme of the game is strong through the storyline, the cards themselves say, gain a fear, lose two fear. It would be more, this is an opportunity they had to add some more flavor to the game. Because when it comes down to it, I think there's three different kinds of aliens. There is one kind of guard, and there's a few weapons. And so the variety in this game really isn't that great. And the gameplay itself is a little ho-hum, where it's move around, fight, roll dice, see what happens, do this, go here, open this door. And there's not that sense of dread, even Betrayal at House on the Hill, which very few people would say is a great game. A lot of people like it, it can be fun, and I like it myself. It, it, 
this might be a better game than that, but Betrayal House on the Hill, when you went to the next room, you're like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen? And then when you had the big thing, it was this really interesting scenario. Here, the scenario is already set in place, and it's kind of like escape the guards scenario. Next scenario. Escape the guards and the aliens. Next scenario. Run. Get the elevator working so you can escape from the guards and the aliens. And it just didn't have that ah, moment in it. And if it, it, it should if it's kind of a scary game. And, and I, I, it, it just didn't offer what I, I wanted from the game. I mean, I, th I thought it'd be cool. I, I'm not saying a board game should scare you. But I couldn't really even get into the mood in this game. I was moving my fear track around. I tried, you know, like, ah, I'm afraid. And the aliens are a little creepy looking. Um, but that was it. The cards didn't do much. It, it felt like we were manipulating cards and rolling dice and trying to be efficient. It, it, it almost felt like the very first itineration of zombies. Where you flip the tiles, see what happens, and the zombies were coming at you. But it was it became very mechanical. Must get to the helicopter. And I think zombies did a good job at kind of focusing that, making that a little better with their 200,000 expansions. This game, I don't want it to have to have expansions to get better. I want it to be good right out of the box. Miniatures, it, it doesn't have them. It doesn't need them. But... <sighs> You're not different. I mean, you have some special abilities, but it's hard to explain. It just didn't give me enough to get involved with the game. And a game like this, if the mechanics aren't amazing, which they're not, needs to get me involved in it, and it didn't. So, uh, I have to pass on this one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.